Oh guys, finally the holiday has arrived. I can't wait to go out. The COVID regulations has eased as well. Where are y'all thinking of going? Hmm. hmm. Now we can use the Singapore we discover voucher, right? I think okay, things is our own money, right? We can technically use it for USS. Oh, okay, okay. Do you think we can go to the Singapore Museum? Oh, those are good shouts though. But I'm not gonna lie, I I want I'm suggesting of uh, an interesting place. Brass Bazaar Complex. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> But Why not? But Bus Bosa only got like art friend and popular. I mean, we only go there to buy like stationery. Go there, there, interesting. Well, there's actually more than meets the eye. Let me introduce you to some of his background. It's not even air conditioned, right? No, it's not. It's completely naturally ventilated. Mm. I see. Bus is currently filled with various types of retail outlets, mainly arts related, such as bookstores, music stores, Chinese sculptures, and etc. It's well known for its artistic community with numerous wall paintings present within the complex and the different types of art-related art events organized in the development. Apart from art friend and popular, right, there are other stores also that are like pretty old, like the music stores and the book stores. Old? Oh, it sounds like a boomer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> normally young people like us will go like Bugis Junction and like whatnot, there's like Muji and Kinokunaria, even Raffles City there's like also like more upcoming like uh, bookstores and whatnot. Even National Library, there's also like, like uh, books there. Why would I want to go to Plaza Bazaar? It's, it's a bit old uh, that place, I feel. And plus, it's like the residence there, uh, it, technically, it's meant to like cater to residents there. Too. So, I don't, not very interesting. Eh? But I remember the commercial district meant for everyone, though. Oh, is it? I didn't know. It all began with rows of shop houses along North Bridge Road which were then demolished and gave way to a new commercial area which sparked the development of Bras Bazaar back in the 20th century and later in the 21st century, the rise of Bugis Junction and Bugis Club. Why did they remove the shop house though? I mean like, such a pity that they removed the shop house. Because like, now like shop houses is considered like prime estate. Alright, so... Plus it's freehold, so it technically holds a lot of money through well, unfortunately, the residents had no choice but to move off because the government thought that these shop houses that had bookstores on the first level, they weren't uh, enough to pave the new era of commercial, which became today's city of books. City of books? But don't they sell more than books? It was originally nicknamed as the City of Books since the shop houses consisted of multiple books catered to children. When the old shop houses were demolished, the renters had to move into Bras Bazaar Complex where it was planned and approved to be a book centre. In the 80s, the early tenants formed the Bras Bazaar Complex Merchants Association to cooperate, protect interests and solve common problems at the newly constructed complex. Ah, our friend and popular. The classic store we always go to. Uh, but like, I always think I like, when I go there, because like, all these like, big name stores, they are actually like, very popular and like, people go there for that reason. Like. So like, all those like, small businesses there, I wonder how they survive for so long. Actually, they have resources that can't be found in conventional bookstores, not even in the NLB. So some people still go there for their oldest resources and stuff. And plus, the typology that Brothers are is, it's not uh, seen very commonly in today's urban society as well. I believe in most buildings during those times, this typology was very popular, especially with buildings of the government. Adequate land was urgently needed for the building of public infrastructure and development. However, substantial tracts of land in Singapore were then held by a relatively small group of private enterprises and individuals. Together with the amendments to the Four Shores Act, the Land Acquisition Act, Help to overcome the existing problems that would have hindered large scale rehousing and land development. Actually, Bus Bazaar was developing a reputation for itself, you know. So it ended up attracting a lot of these like newer stores to set up to be part of this artistic community that is in. I mean, since it's so popular, like, normally people would like redevelop the place or like make it make it look nicer or, and whatnot. Because now it looks like very old, there's not even air conditioning there, so it's not very modern, you see. Well, when we talk about modernism, in, at those times, modernism is very similar to brutalism, which is apparently what used to build Bras Bazaar. So it came about from the heavy use of concrete, and I think it's made popular by Le Corbusier, we should all know him very well. Yeah. 
Concrete was the main material of most buildings. Steel was more expensive than concrete at the time, and since HDB wanted affordable housing developments, it would only seem fitting if Bras Basa complex was made of concrete. During the post-independence of Singapore, Buddhism became synonymous with the socially progressive housing solutions that was promoted as modern streets in the sky. You know, one thing I don't understand, right? now it's like 2021, by why you should have better technology, better research, so the materials we are using should be more environmentally friendly, you know what I mean, instead of concrete. Yeah, but actually the government wasn't really aware of this concerning issue at that time. Like the more concerning issue was actually after Singapore gained independence, the scarcity of public developments. So uh, they have to look for the most convenient solution, which is the con uh, material concrete. I think they were aware of this issue. They just couldn't afford to care because they had to put a roof over their people's heads. And also concrete is a very is a material used even then and now, especially for high rise buildings. A new heritage group known as Dokomomo is looking to shift Singapore's conservation focus towards modern buildings. Mostly built after 1965, they tell the story of a country's urban renewal in its early independent years. Singapore today is thoroughly modern, not just in the city centre but in the public housing estates. So if you want to tell the Singapore story, how can we not focus on Singapore's modern architecture, said Dr. Zak. Under the Singapore Conservation Act, they were actually built by the British colonial. But well, since Bras Basel was built after Singapore gained independence, it kind of serves as like a memory as to where Singapore started from. Uh, I would like conversation of the Bras Basel complex, but in terms of uh, maintenance wise, I think maintaining such a high rise building right, is going to be very costly in terms of manpower and also in terms of like the land value itself because land is very scarce in Singapore. I believe since the government built this, the government should pay the money for the maintenance. Besides, most government buildings will be so-called demolished after 99 years. So, have I managed to convince you to come to Bras Basel Complex? 